Hey movie fans, let's explore the 1956 classic, The Harder They Fall. This movie has a great story and amazing acting. But before we get into the details, let's hear from you. Do you have any special memories or favorite scenes from this movie? Share them with us below. Get your snacks ready, hit play, and let's dive into The Harder They Fall. Your stories are important too. Enjoy the show. A film from 1956 has left a lasting impression on cinema, influencing how we view the world of professional boxing even today. Directed by Mark Robson, it bravely exposes the corruption lurking within the sport. This movie sheds light on the exploitation of fighters for profit, changing how people think about fairness in sports. The film's impact is seen in the way it paved the path for other works exploring the less glamorous side of athletics. It has inspired filmmakers to take a critical look at the industry's behind-the-scenes dealings, shaping how modern sports dramas are told. Decades may have passed, but the themes of corruption, integrity, and exploitation remain as relevant as ever. Audiences still connect with the struggles depicted in the movie, making it a timeless piece of storytelling. In summary, the film's influence, significance, and lasting relevance lie in its raw portrayal of the dark underbelly of professional boxing. It prompts ongoing conversations about ethics in sports and continues to captivate audiences, proving its impact over time. Humphrey Bogart's son, Stephen H. Bogart, delved into his relationship with his father in his 1996 book, Bogart in Search of My Father. Rod Steiger, known for his roles in acclaimed films like On the Waterfront and In the Heat of the Night, revealed during an interview with Robert Osborne on Turner Classic Movies that he used to sing while on duty in the United States Navy during World War II. However, his impromptu performances came to an end when the ship's captain caught wind of them. Steiger's impressive filmography includes not only Best Picture winners, but also nominations showcasing his versatile talent on screen. Humphrey Bogart, known for his roles in films such as The African Queen and The K-Mutiny, served in the U.S. Navy during World War I. Bogart's group of friends, initially called the Homeby Hills Rat Pack, was renamed after his wife Lauren Buckhall described them as such one morning. However, the group disliked the label after Bogart's passing in 1957. Angela Stevens filed a lawsuit seeking damages for injuries allegedly caused by an ocelot in a dress shop. The case settled out of court in September 1956. Following the passing of Norman Lloyd at the age of 106, Nehemiah Persoff became the oldest living male Star Trek actor at 101, while Marcia Hunt claimed the title of oldest living Star Trek actor at 104. All three of them made appearances on Star Trek The Next Generation. Frank Mitchell and Dern collaborated in providing comic relief in Alice Faye musicals, such as She Learned About Sailors, 365 Nights in Hollywood, and Music is Magic. They later parted ways to pursue separate careers. Before finding success as an actor, Robert Fuller served as the assistant manager of Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood, California. The airplane Toro boards to return home had a long life in the air. It was delivered to Pan Am in 1953 and flew 12 years in their fleet of international clippers. Then it had a long second life hauling cargo around the Caribbean with several airlines. It was scrapped in 1990 after 37 years of service. Max Baer and Jersey Joe Walcott, who portrayed Brannon and George respectively, had both been heavyweight champions of the world. Humphrey Bogart, known for his performance as Sam Spade in The Maltese Falcon, is ranked 50 on Premier Magazine's 100 Greatest Performances of All Time. In a classic movie, a familiar face from the show demonstrated his comedy skills on another program in the 1970s. He often misled contestants with intentionally wrong answers, adding a twist to the game show. Meanwhile, another prominent figure in the same movie left a lasting impact on romantic cinema with his roles in several well-known films. From famous movies like Casablanca to timeless ones like Sabrina, his performances showed he was good at different types of roles. In the final scene of the film currently aired on Turner Classic Movies, the main character starts an investigation to fight corruption in boxing. However, in a version shown in the 70s, the character had a more radical stance calling for the total ban of boxing. This different ending, not approved by the author, shows different views on the sport's influence. The alternate endings of the movie, along with the contributions of the actors, make the film's legacy richer, giving viewers various interpretations of its themes and characters. During the production of The Harder They Fall, there circulated a Hollywood rumor that Humphrey Bogart's illness led to the need for an impersonator to dub his voice. Contrary to the legend, the voice heard in the film is Bogart's authentic voice. In a small, uncredited role, Joe Greb, a former boxer with a 12-year career, 
and one of the 19 bouts portrays a brain-damaged boxer speaking about the sport's harmful effects. Greb, having suffered irreversible brain damage, essentially plays himself, advocating for fighter safety. Nehemiah Persoff, part of the Harder They Fall cast, also appeared in two other films centered on the life of Christ, the greatest story ever told, and the last temptation of Christ. These facts provide a glimpse into the production nuances and personal connections within the cast, adding layers to the narrative of the harder they fall. Each contributor, whether through their authentic voice, personal experiences, or filmography, brings a unique dimension to the movie. In looping foreign language films into English, Paul Fries often took on multiple roles. This practice extended to Hollywood films, where he provided dialogue replacement for various characters. Filming for The Harder They Fall took place in late 1955, predating Humphrey Bogart's cancer diagnosis in January the following year. Nehemiah Persoff, who appeared in The Harder They Fall, was the oldest living collaborator of Alfred Hitchcock from The Wrong Man until his passing in April 2022. In his career, Robert Fuller teamed up with Michael Landon's son, Michael Landon Jr., in Bonanza, The Next Generation. Fuller also worked again with his former co-star Randolph Mantooth from Emergency on two other shows The Fall Guy and Diagnosis Murder. The last movie Patricia Dane appeared in was The Harder They Fall, marking an important moment in her film history. Robert Fuller's connections in the entertainment industry show how actors can work together on different projects over time, building lasting partnerships. These connections among actors reveal the way people in the industry collaborate and support each other, showing how Robert Fuller and others create bonds that go beyond just one project. Paul Fries, known for his versatility in portraying multiple characters on radio shows, was granted his own show, The Player, in 1948, where he showcased his talent by voicing all the characters. Humphrey Bogart was initially considered by producer Hal B. Wallies to star alongside Burt Lancaster in Gunfight at the OK Corral. However, the role eventually went to Kirk Douglas. Primo Carnera, a former boxer, filed a lawsuit against the creators of the movie, alleging that it tarnished his reputation by suggesting he was involved in fixed fights. Carner's boxing career is shrouded in mystery, with many historians speculating that his managers paid his opponents to throw matches without his knowledge. In the world of movies, there's a classic film from 1956 called The Harder They Fall, bringing together the talents of a familiar narrator, Paul Fries, and a well-known actor. Paul Fries was part of Stan Freeberg's team, and notably lent his voice to Stan Freeberg Presents the United States of America, Vol. 1. The actor, celebrated for leaving a lasting mark in cinema, starred in seven films recognized by the Library of Congress for their cultural, historical, or aesthetic significance. These movies include titles like The Maltese Falcon, Casablanca, The Big Sleep, The Treasure of the Sierra Mater, and A Lonely Place, The African Queen, and Sabrina. One memorable role was the portrayal of Sam Spade in The Maltese Falcon, earning a spot at 80 on Premier Magazine's list of the 100 greatest movie characters of all time. And the harder they fall, the actor's skill unfolds in a different story, seamlessly adding another layer to the actor's legacy. While this film might not carry the same weight as some of his earlier works, it's a valuable part of the actor's diverse career.